Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about extreme values. So what do we mean by extreme values? We really mean, uh, when we have a function, a maximum or minimum value of that function. So this is something we care about a lot in applications, right? So uh, if we're talking about minimizing cost, minimizing you know travel time, maximizing profit, these are naturally things that we would investigate in the real world and it turns out we can use calculus to analyze a lot of these things so that's kind of our goal here so first let's look at a definition okay so here's our definition uh, let f be a function on some interval i containing the point c then f of c is an absolute maximum so we could just say maximum but we'll have relative maximums later where you're looking kind of locally so we'll say absolute if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in your interval so let's get a picture down here so we can start thinking about this so let's say our interval is from here to here and we have some function that looks like this then here would be maybe my C1, and if you look at F of C1 up here, then you're gonna note that this value is greater than or equal to any other value on your graph on this interval. And then likewise, right, if we look at C2 here, and then F of C2, we notice that F of C2 is less than or equal to all values in our interval, and so that would be an absolute minimum. So this is our min and this is our max. So as an example, I want to look at sine of x. So in this case, uh, I think it's a good example because I really want to focus on the fact that these maximum and minimum values are y values and not x values. Okay, right? So it's the f of c that is the value, not the c. And so in this case, we have a lot of points that give us the same maximum value, right? Sine is something that hits one a whole bunch of times and we know that's the biggest it gets, right? So it has an absolute max value of one. And this occurs at many points, right? So for instance, it, it occurs at pi over two, it occurs at then five pi over two, right? This one would be back at negative three pi over two and so on, right? We have a whole bunch of them. You have it happen every two pi, right? And similarly, we see a whole bunch of times where it bottoms out at negative one. So it would have an absolute minimum value. That's the smallest value that sine attains of negative one at negative pi over two, three pi over two, you know, seven pi over two, and so on, right? So in this case, there's only one max value and one minimum value, but they occur at infinitely many points. So now I wanna go back to that first picture we had. So, you know, when we had this like closed interval here, we had our max up top and our minimum down here. But what if we extend, right? What if I continue this graph off in either direction? So then, there is no max or min value here, right? We go off to infinity, there is no actual peak. We go off to negative infinity, there's no actual like valley there. But it seems like there's still something important going on here and here, right? We still see like this change in uh, direction from where it went from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. We're still seeing like a peak nearby, right? If we zoom in, it looks like we have a max. So this introduces the notion of relative extrema, where rather than looking at the whole interval, you're concerned about small neighborhoods of points, right? So I'm looking locally, I'm zooming in on this, and it looks like a max there. And we will introduce this formally next. So here's this definition. So your relative maximum, if you're not necessarily greater than all of the things in the interval i in your domain, but rather you're bigger than the things really close to you. So I said in parentheses here, and I think this is a good way to think about it, that f of c is the biggest value in its neighborhood. So let's go back to that example, right? So if this goes off to infinity, negative infinity, and if I look here, so it's not the biggest overall, right? Because if I go far enough to the right, I'm gonna go up above it. But if I look at c in just like a small interval around it, 
right, that I'm looking at this part of my graph and I zoom in, this is my biggest value, right? And so this is what I mean by like its neighborhood. And similarly, if we do something over here, you know, if that was C1 say, and this is C2, um, then again, if we take a small interval around, we zoom in on this point, this is your relative minimum, even though if you go really far to the left, you're going off to negative infinity here. So it's not the smallest on the whole domain. Okay, and so here is exercise one. So I just drew a graph here, and I want you to find the x coordinate of the location of all of these kind of in order. So an absolute maximum, an absolute minimum, uh, or I should say of all of these. So there may be more than one answer per. Uh, absolute maximum, absolute minimum, relative maximum, and relative minimum. So again, enter all possible. And if you don't think there is one, uh, then write D and E if there isn't one. Okay. So the last thing we'll talk about here is the extreme value theorem. So we've already seen the intermediate value theorem, uh, and we will later see the mean value theorem. So this is kind of the middle one. Uh, so all of these are, are pretty important in their own ways. And this one is a way to tell us when there exists an absolute max and absolute min for our function. So here's the statement. Let f be continuous function on a closed interval i. If it satisfies those two conditions, which are the same as the IVT conditions, continuous on a closed interval, then f has both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum value on that interval. So I first want to talk about why do we have to have a closed interval here? So what if you didn't, right? So a very simple example would be kind of a line, but if you had an open interval, right, like a line on the domain from A to B here, but not including the endpoints. So you can see, right, that like the maximum and minimum values should be the things at the endpoints, but the endpoints aren't there, right? So this would be the max, but we have a hole, so there's no max, and this would be the min, but again, there's a hole, so there's no minimum. So this is why you need a closed interval, uh, because your endpoints could be where the maximum or minimum value is, uh, and so if you don't have those endpoints, then you're out of luck. And another option is something that you've already seen, right, where not having a closed interval allows you to go off to infinity in either direction, in which case, again, you would have no min because you keep going down forever and no max because you keep going up forever. So uh, whether it's a finite interval that doesn't have the endpoints or just an infinite interval, things can go wrong in either case. So for your second exercise, I actually want you to tell me why continuity is a necessary assumption here. So can you give an example of why you could potentially be missing a max or a min or both if your function is not continuous. Like what can go wrong? So this will be kind of an open-ended short answer on Edfinity. Alrighty, thank you for watching.